Good evening and welcome to the Sunderland Select Board meeting. Today is Monday, the 9th of December, and it's uh, 6.30 p.m. <clears throat> We've got a little bit of a lighter agenda tonight. We've got our, uh, our minutes. We're going to discuss the school budget and calendar discussion with uh, Superintendent Darius Modesto there as our special guest for the evening. And uh, we've got, uh, we're going to discuss a request for a waiver of the notice of period for a potential um, Department of Fish and Game purchase up on uh, the Mount Toby area. And then we've got our, some of our usual placeholders for our COVID-19 discussion, <clears throat> discussion of uh, basically the benchmarks for employee wages and basically our finances. And then any select board and town administrator updates. So I'm, we're unfortunately, we're down one individual tonight. So there's uh, just Tom and I here for this evening. <clears throat> So our first item is our minutes from November 2nd. Motion. All right, and uh, I'll second that. All those in favor for the minutes of approving the minutes of November 2nd? Aye. Aye, all right, two to zero on that one. And then next up is Superintendent Modesto. How are you tonight? Doing just swell. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for coming. <clears throat> so, how are things uh, going in the school you know, department? We're, we're we're moving right along. Um, things are going well. I think the uh, you know it's certainly difficult times, and each week brings us new adventures. But you know we're able to keep our hybrid model going moving forward, and I think it's uh, and keeping COVID out, so to speak. Knock on wood. They do several times a week. Yeah. Um, but things have been going well and, um, and we're looking to see what phase three could be for us and trying to get more students back in the building, um, obviously in safe numbers and such, but that's what the school committee will be discussing. At the five meetings over the next two weeks, it's on all our agendas to discuss that. And the, you know, we saw the metrics, the, matrix, uh, the metrics coming out from the state, they've changed that up. I think that's helpful. I mean, we were turning red with five or six cases in our small towns um, of Sunderland. Yep. Um, and just, I think it gives us a more realistic, more realistic understanding or fear factor. I think when people were turning red, there was a, there was a fear a few weeks back when that happened in Sunderland, as you guys probably talked about, but right. so that part was good, but you know, talked about it, I'm sure you did, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the, uh, so the main reason, you know, I asked if, you know, I asked you if I could come on tonight to talk about, I got your note regarding um, budget timelines. And then, you know, I had concerns regarding um, having budgets ready for early January. I'm not sure if that's exactly what the, your email was intending, but um, I just wanted to start communicating early about, you know, what is the expectations, you know, within the timeline right now um, for coming up with budgets. Cause it's, we're gonna be, not knowing what our revenues are, and I mean, you guys are in the same spot. I know you're, you're in the same spot as the town, not knowing what the state's going to do. Um, you know, what is the timeline um, in communicating how we're going to communicate through it? I just wanted to have a conversation about it, I guess. Yep. Yeah, I mean, hopeful, we're all hoping for a little more clarity by the, you know, the close of this month, I think. That's one of the important things. So hopefully we'll, we'll see where they stand with that. And I noticed the... Um, they issued the cherry sheets the other day, right? That was a Friday, I think it was, Jeff? Yeah. There, there, there. There was a slight increase in chapter 70, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was not a lot. Yeah, but maybe. Yeah, well, we're like 17. I know it was a tiny amount, so. Right, so it's, there's slight there and then there's a slight increase. Well, transportation that affects Frontier, but it was the other two and then the where things went slightly down, those are gonna be hard to figure out until we see exactly how they do that. But I think overall it's, I think they're gonna have a stable for this year. Um, right. You know, um, if, you know, I guess they're, they're debating that now. I guess the question is building next year's budget. Of course we need this year's in order to build the following years. But um, I just, you know, when we, you know, in the note that was given to me was proposing a, um, I don't know if it was level services, level funded budget. Um, you know, obviously, I understand it's going to be a difficult year coming up. I'm prepared for that. Um, I think we've been talking about it, being prepared for that. 
but the process of giving a number, um, giving a number without having all the information is going to be it's going to be difficult to do. And I want to make sure I'm not putting myself on a spot where I propose a number without going through the process of each step of the way. And so, um, I mean, Frontier, I think is a lot more straightforward with that without the cherry sheets for the next year. We have no idea what the, we have no idea what our, uh, you know, what our, uh, what kind of money we are going to have from the state. And so we have no idea where we're going to be able to build from our revenues and the different revenue sources that we have you know, it just takes a little bit longer time to build. And so now having no idea what the assessments will be in a sense of, so our biggest our biggest numbers within the budget, and I say this, kind of, you guys know this stuff, but I, I'll say it for those watching, um, you know, obviously is salaries and the increases in salaries. And the second thing is insurance. Um, insurance can change, can range and especially in, in something like Frontier can be, in, you know, we've seen years where it's been a $100,000 change, um, you know, so, um, not knowing that those are, we won't have those numbers until September and how that'll affect, or not September, sorry, excuse me, January. Um, yeah, if we had to wait till September, that'd be a problem. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, I was really, and then also what are we building our model around? And that's the hardest part. Although today's news is wonderful. Um, you know, the Pfizer um, information that came out today regarding a possible, you know, vaccine, you know, maybe by, maybe the entire population by mid let's just say by summer, that would allow us to plan for a normal opening for the following year. And we said that today's information changes everything there was last week. Last week, I was like, I don't know if I'm going back to a hybrid model, which is very expensive or right. you know, that kind of thing. And so um, anyway, so I guess, you know, I know it's early on in the process. I just, I guess I'm saying there's no way I'm going to have you a printed out budget by early January, you know, um, because if there's any within that budget, you're gonna to wanna to see where the, the ups and downs are. And I don't even know what those ups and downs are gonna be. But I also know you're gonna need a number, you know, um, to work off of as I know schools take up, you know, a little over half of your budget, our school. So depending on where the, those numbers go. So I just, I just know it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a lot of communication this spring. Yes, <laughs> this yes. and, and I think the key for all of us too, the other part of this is obviously, you know, individual town revenues and how they do so and we're all kind of waiting to figure that out so right right and I, i've been waiting you know hope you know they said uh, you know you just don't you say we don't trust but the you know i was waiting for the revenues to the town to make sure that they were not so this year's budget you know that you know the fy 21's budget being right. strong enough that the town didn't get so hard where it has to go and ask the school for help and the other way around it's usually you know what i mean Yep. Usually it doesn't work that way, but because we're already in operation, obviously. So um, that's good if that looks stable there, but and then going into next year. Um, I will have the capital requests on time. We'll, we'll be pushing those through school committee. Uh, first discussions this week um, in next, well, Sunderland's next week. And then uh, we'll be able to vote on that in December about what we want to move forward there. So you'll, it'll be clear there, but there's no real surprises. We built that working document that um, shows where we're going on that. Um, in Frontier is not going to have anything big either. I can see that right now. We already have a lot of the stuff we're working off the loan um, that also will not, we're not going to take the first, um, for the capital improvements of Frontier, we're not going to take the first part of that um, borrowing until, so it won't affect FY22, it'll affect FY23. Okay, so, so just pushed out a little. Yeah, we put, yeah. so it gives us, you know, you have a 13 month window so we can actually start. The first thing on the, on the list right now is a track and we have the final plans to go out to bid this spring. But if we don't start the project until July, which is the kind of the game plan, it allows us 12 months before the first time we have to go assess the town. So we'll be able to avoid that um, additional by holding back knowing it's gonna be a tougher year. And I've been saying that for a while now, but yeah. uh, just kind of saying it again. Yeah, so, I mean, what are you guys thoughts on you know, the process this year, what are your concerns within the, I guess, within the communication, you know, I think and compared to other years. Yeah, I think we're just trying to get as much of a grip on things as we can, as early as we can. And it, it will be hard, you know. <clears throat> I think we're all kind of in that same boat, just sitting here wondering, waiting for the fog to clear, essentially, and seeing where the, where the lifeboat is, you know. So... Right. And I think, you know, getting close to a, a, a level, I say getting close to a level funded budget, um, you know, I think is, is 
I think it's realistic knowing what, where we're coming at next year. And I mean, if it's level, if, if that's what all the damage we have this year, I will be surprised. Um, I could even say I'll be pleased. Um, you know, so I mean, obviously we're not going to be. We know straight off we're not coming in looking at you know five percent and adding this and adding that and that kind of stuff. It's going to be a year trying to. We also have a lot of different other moving numbers where we've had you know more transition in our population. We've had a lot of students go go homeschooling, which is going to affect some of our money, um, just because they didn't want to have to deal with the remote learning aspect of things. And so those making sure we get those families back. Um, right. School choice has been messed mixed up with that preschool. Um, you know, because we had limited numbers in with those funds are being affected by that. And also, well, you know, it's great the federal government's giving free lunches to everybody, but the federal, the free lunch program is actually losing money because they don't give us enough money to pay for all of our expenses around that. So it's paying, right. paying students for helping subsidize the overall lunch program. That's taking a hit. So there's a lot of numbers that are going to flow into next year. But. Definitely going to be a challenging couple of years, I would say. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I guess, um, what would you like to see in early January? You know, I, I mean, if I, I'm putting you on the spot, you guys can think about it and get back to me too. It's it's early November, so we have some time still to talk about it. But that's kind of where I, I don't want to be like, well, you can't, I don't have the information, so you get nothing. But I want to be able to communicate with you guys about, you know, this is where we're looking, this is what we're seeing things. We'll have some of our numbers kind of drawn out by then um, as well about what does it look like? What do our expenses look like for next year, you know, going in? What does that look like for, you know, percentage increases across the board where we estimating that kind of stuff and what that total bill of increase would be and then how we get there, I guess, would be the conversation we have up until then probably. Yeah, I, th I think I think probably the the likely thing is to try to hew as close to normal timeframes as we can, given the lack of information. And then I think probably one of the biggest, most important things is just communicating with each other. You know, as soon as we know some information, making sure that we've got a clear flow of info back and forth between each other, because we're all in this uh, in this together. So we may as well try to figure it out together, you know? Yeah. And I would definitely agree <clears> that last statement, unlike other budget years where each you have a town that's up or a town that's down, and then even our surrounding neighbors. I think everybody's gonna get hit all at once. And um, right, yeah, I and, think it's it's a little different than usual. And you know, and hopefully the you know with with the you know the potential vaccine and things like that, that'll allow us to get the service sectors of the economy rolling again and things like that. So, <clears throat> you yep. know, um, did you have anything specific you wanted to bring up, Tom, at all? Or I I would say. I would say that I right now, Odessa, you you um Darius, you, you actually almost talk like a selectman. <laughs> and, oh, I and hope it, not. Uh. <laughs> you do in the you do in the fact that you're 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 talking revenue, you talk revenue along with expenses. Right. And and a lot of times a, a lot of times we hear people talk the expense and they don't talk about the revenue side of the budget. Um, but we, we feel that, that we felt for forever that the budget is a two, you know, it's, it's it, 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 the revenue side is as important as the, the, the expenditures. So I, I, I would ask is if, if you just, you know, you start looking and, and it's, it, it's a little different for you and it'll be different for us. That we're 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 going to start looking at our expenditure side, um, and and knowing that we really can't do a lot with the uh, the revenue side yet because we don't have the numbers. And and I would say I would suggest the same thing. Just you know, just keep looking at the expenditure side. Um, see see what programs that you you need to continue, you need to add or or you drop. And and I I would say that that's probably the most important thing at right now. Okay. And I'm sorry I insulted you about the selection stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that's, and again, that's my concern is all of our revenue sides are, there's none that are avoiding, you know, we have small amounts, like things like preschool and like lunch program, and all of them are getting hit. And so it's going to be, it's, it's, it's going to be hit in different ways. So more to come, I guess, on that, but it'll be, it'll be an yeah. interesting budget year, that's for sure. 
and, and and we we really haven't we haven't received any guidance yet from from MMA or the our state legislators. So we're we're kind of we're out there running running blind as well as you. Yeah. I know we got a couple. We I think Greg's on and, and Peter's on. If, if any of them guys want, to, I'll leave it. Any of you guys want to jump on anything, or is it? Am I saying it all for you? Uh, Dennis, the only thing I'd add is that uh, um, I know that when normally we start talking in the school committee budget in the January meeting, um, and serious talking in the fe early February meeting, and um, I know that. Uh, when those meetings get close, I'll be talking back to members of select board because I think that um, to the extent it's possible, you guys sitting in on those meetings, um, particularly now when it's on Zoom and you can come for whatever the part of the meeting that's the finance budget discussion, um, that would also be real helpful in terms of, um, you know, you understanding what our issues are and getting more regular updates about how the overall town picture is for our point of view. And so, you know, I'll make sure that we're letting you know when these things are and, and again, encourage you to come if you can. Thank you, Peter. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I know, I know we got the same, you know, Greg's the chair and he's had the same um, attitude that you guys have, which is when, you know, you come to our meeting, it's like you're there as full members of the, of the meeting. I mean, you don't have to wait for public comment or anything like that. It's, it's, you know, we're there to, to, to communicate and to understand what's going on and do the best we can at that. And you hit on one thing. I think that using Zoom does help in some ways because it makes it a little easier so you don't have to go physically travel from one spot to another. So, you know, yeah. maybe afterwards we can still incorporate some of this in because I think it's a useful tool for that. <clears throat> but, um, I also like to say thanks to everybody, all the teachers and everybody, because I know that everybody's doing a lot of um, tough and unexpected work this year. And we really appreciate it. It's been a challenging year so far. I think you hit that on the head. It's a, a clearly <clears throat> doing a dual platform and with all the other kind of things with going on. The teachers have really stepped up. And if you look around, um, I'm very proud of this district I and mean, we are able to get students back and um, those people who need to stay remote are getting service um, and a lot of the districts around us are not able to get to where we are at right now and that's you really attribute to the teachers for stepping up and getting it done so right it's great. Really appreciate it. <clears throat> and in the end maybe it'll make us all a little more resilient so there you go. <clears throat> all right all right well, thanks. We appreciate the uh, the update, and you know, like kind of like Peter was saying, we'll just make sure we communicate, you know, even more so than normal. You know, a lot of more back and forth, and <clears throat> you know, appreciate the updates. Peter does a good job of filling us in on on things if one of us isn't at a meeting or something like that. So it's yeah. very good. Right. Thanks, David. Thanks. All right. Well, thank you guys. I'm going to jump off. If you don't need me. All right. Thanks. All right. Have a good night. Thanks, Aries. All right. Bye, guys. All right, next up on our agenda, we've got a request for a waiver of the notice period for a potential DFG purchase. Do you wanna um, bring up maybe the map so we can show folks where that is too? Is it up? Uh, I can see the agenda. Oh, hmm. How about now? No? No, uh, it flipped. Now? Nope. What do you I see? Like, I get the first page of the agenda. Oh, all right. Let me. Uh, right. You I, can use Zoom on multiple screens. Yeah. <laughs> you can introduce it if you want while we're. Uh, so we received a, a letter that the Department of Fish and Game was interested in purchasing a uh, parcel um, near Mount Toby. And maybe now you can see it. Ah, there it is. Okay. Is it? Yep. Yeah, and it's that yellow parcel yep. number 31 right there, right? Exactly. And it's not marked on here, but that road that goes up, that's Middle Mountain Road, isn't it? I think right along there. Uh, yes. Isn't that what that is, Tom? Yep. <clears throat> so um, I think one thing for folks is that uh, they're saying that they're going to keep the same uses essentially as open space and, and management for, you know, hunting and trapping and other, you know, what they call non-invasive uses of the, uh, of the property. 
Yeah, and I can pull up um, another map, which maybe is pulling up now. It's coming up. Yeah, there it yep. is. So yep. they, um, I think they already own some nearby property. Yep, the green part right above it, and yeah. the and there's a little looks like there's a little overlap with the land trust parcel there too. I think that is it, or is that just an overlay real. issue? Yeah, I think if we go to the um, the parcel map, it's the, the, um, the one in between. Yeah. Okay. Can't get these to both open. Oh, I can. Okay. Oh. Well, that's all right. We've got to, you know, at least we can see where it is. Yeah. And we, we have a letter of support or a letter in support for the purchase of that. Yes. Um, basically, it, uh, they had requested a letter of support, which would reduce the notice period, um, which otherwise would be 120 days. Is it going down to 60? The reduction. They did, the did, uh, Department of Fish and Game did not um, say exactly what the new notice period would be. So I think it's different than the uh, APR that I think you that did notice. last week, which reduced it from 120 to 60. It may just, um, the fact that it was discussed in, in the select board, if you do choose to sign the letter, signed it with is notice. Um, okay. And and as far as I know, there's no, they're just looking at the property. There, there've been, I'm not aware that they've, they have an offer in or anything like that. Although I assume that they wouldn't have reached out to us if they, right, if they weren't interested. Okay. So we're still in the earlier phases of it at, at least at this point. Okay. <clears throat> um, did you have any comments on that one, Tom? No, that's fine. I had okay. to good land to, to own. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> It'll keep it protected for hunting and, and all those other uses. So that's good. <clears throat> all right. Um, do you want to make a motion for that, Jeff? Okay. All right. I'll second. All those in favor of the uh, letter? Aye. Aye. All right. Thanks. <clears throat> and uh, with that, we get to our, and I think I saw Laurie on there earlier, we get to our weekly COVID-19 state of emergency update. Good evening. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? All right. Are, are, are we still in the dove gray or whatever color name we're uh, calling it there this week? I'm not sure my <laughs> math is equal to their metrics. <laughs> <laughs> um, as of, let's see, uh, Wednesday, November 4th, we had notice of one new positive case. And then Thursday, November 5th, we had notice of two close contacts and okay. one positive case. Okay. So that's so, two for the week. I'm just, I'm trying to figure out what their metric is. If they're looking how many weeks back, if it's total cases since yep. it started. That's true. Like what's your time frame for that reporting? Right. And, yep. and I don't understand it yet. My understanding is that it's a rolling 14 days ending the week before the report comes out. Okay. So if the report comes out, for example, say on, a, on today, it would be the 14 days prior to today that... No, period, it, would or be, the, it would be the 21 okay. through 7 days prior to today. Okay. All right. But yes, not so that's including the last 7 days. Is is my understanding? I could I could be wrong. That's bad math. Or or maybe to make it easier for us and everybody who's watching, since we last met, we have had two close contacts and two new cases. That's probably a good. That's at least an easier way for us while we're here to talk about it. Yes, correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, how is um how are things going with you, Mass and the uh reporting back and forth there any any new uh developments at all there or haven't heard a word okay. jeff yeah right. i think that they're good I, I haven't heard anything negative so i'm assuming that the relationship is is remaining positive and 
they're communicating everything that they need to. All right, that's good because usually negative issues have a way of bubbling to the surface way more than positive ones. So, okay. <clears throat> Any other um, updates at all, Lori? No, not for me. Okay. This, well, that's that's good. I mean, in that respect. Yes. How about uh, on the town side, Jeff? Uh, yeah. So we were approved and received uh, round two of coronavirus relief fund act funds um second reporting deadline is this friday that's through the expenses through the end of september so um that'll be going in um i think it would be good to just reiterate that as of Friday, the governor's orders are in place. Um, anybody who's out in public should be wearing a mask regardless of social distancing. Um, no gatherings indoors of more than 10 people and all gatherings must end at 9.30. Um, outdoor gatherings limited to 25 people and um, restaurants and uh, other establishments need to stop serving at 9.30. And then there's the stay-at-home advisory from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. with limited exceptions for necessities or work. Um, and on, on the bright side, today was the first day that the town office building is started its uh, opening by appointment only. So oh, good. for residents that are out there that want to... Um, meet face to face, one on one or two on one. I think that's the, the limit that our offices can hold. Um, please call and, and make an appointment and we will do our best to accommodate you. Great. And then so maybe next week we'll have a little more, since it'll be a week or so, we'll have a little more feedback on how it's going too, which is good. Yeah, uh, we're that's still fun. encouraging people if they can uh, do business by mail or email or phone call, then that's the safest way to do it. Um, but for those things that do require, you know, one-on-one -on -one meetings. Yeah, and, and hopefully that's actually worked out for, us, for a number of folks too, being able to do things by mail and email. You know, maybe it makes it easier for certain transactions. So, yeah. all right, excellent. We'll see what, uh, how our next week goes. And then potentially good news on a, you know, a potential for a vaccine. So we'll see how that pans out. Keep our fingers crossed. It'd be a good thing. It would, it would. Because <clears throat> the caseloads are rising pretty rapidly. So, but we all kind of knew that that was gonna happen when we got to this time of year. It was just a matter of the degree of it. So, well, there's my cue to stand up. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks, Lori, appreciate it. You're welcome. Have a good night. Thanks, you too. Um, and now we get back down to our, uh, essentially our little budget discussion, but I don't think we have any really, any new news on that at the moment, right? So <clears throat> we'll keep waiting for some more info on that. Um, and then we got select board updates. I don't know if you have any updates this week, Tom. Um, just a couple of things. One is I just like to uh, thank the residents of Sundown that came out and voted on uh, last Tuesday either your absentee ballots or your voting early or in person. I also want to thank the, uh, the, the town clerk and the crew that she put together for the, uh, the election. Um, it, it's, if anybody, you, you heard a lot of people questioning how things happen, why things happen um, over the last week. Um, if, if you want to know how, how it works, um, I would talk to the town clerk, um, any town clerk, the town clerk in Sunderland, the town clerk in Deerfield, wherever they, they, they'll explain it to you. And, and it's a very regimented thing, including the, the state after, after, after the election, they'll get all together and they ought, they, they audit the, uh, at random, they, they audit the different towns. So um, I, I just, again, I just want to thank 
everyone that took the time to vote. Um, and not only the, the people that took the time to vote, but the people that, that worked the polls and worked on the uh, uh, counting of the ballots. Um, because it, really, you guys are the ones that they're the you're you're the people that actually make um, our votes count. So thank you. That'd be it, David. I would agree. Yeah, and plus the work was spread out over a longer period of time than usual too this year. So <clears throat> definitely thanks to Wendy and her team. They did a great job. <clears throat> um, I've got the only update I've got this week is we have our first personnel committee and committee meeting in a little while tomorrow night. So. Got a few topics on that agenda, so we'll be talking about that. <clears throat> and now it's time for the town administrator moment. Things. Um, one is that the um, complete streets uh, bid will be going out. Um, well, it's been notice has been posted and it's just being finalized. But um, the highway superintendent and I are going to be uh, on South Silver Lane at 8:30 uh, a.m. on Saturday, um, just to walk the route. And if there are any uh, neighbors or abutters who are interested in learning more about what the plan is, we're going to be out there to answer questions. Um, and then I also wanted to note that the uh, bid for mowing and landscaping services for public buildings and grounds um, has gone out. We started receiving a couple responses for that. Um, and, and we're hoping to, uh, well, bids are gonna be due by the end of the month. So we will know then um, what's happening going forward. All right, that's good. And, uh, and just a reminder too, next Wednesday is Veterans Day. So we'll keep that in our, in our minds and everything too as we go forward because we, things will be a little different this year. So um, do we have any public comments at all? Hmm? All right, I think that might be about it. And our next meeting will be next Monday, November 16th at 6 30 p.m okay. all right we have a motion to adjourn i'll okay. second all those in favor of adjourning at uh 704 aye. aye all right thanks thank you everybody we'll see you next week <clears throat>